Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 in lovely Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am right here with you each and every week at this time on this station to bring you, the landowner, the information you need regarding natural gas development here in Pennsylvania. And of course, as it always is, and it always will be, I, Doug Clark, I have not, I do not, and I will not, I never, ever have, and I never, ever, ever will represent a gas or pipeline company. I represent the Pennsylvania landowner, the Pennsylvania oil and gas right owner, because we need representation. You need representation. We cannot continue to allow, has been as occurring for years and years now, companies to take advantage of the landowner. And how that occurs is because, unfortunately, the landowners are, and I'm sorry, but are allowing it to occur because they're not taking action. They're not getting help. They're not. I preach these reviews and consultations all the time. And the reason why I do is because they can help you. We need to get you this information. The radio show is general information. Get you thinking. You need this information, but we need to get you more information. We need to get you specific information for you and your circumstance to make sure that you don't get taken advantage of. Unless you like being taken advantage of. And I don't know who does. I don't know who does. I talk to people all the time, almost every day, some multiple times a day. I don't know that I've ever talked to anyone that says, boy, I love that I got taken advantage of. Boy, I love that the market rate was 15% and I signed at 12 and a half. Boy, I love that I thought I was getting royalty without deduction. And then when I got my first royalty check, there was 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% taken in deductions. Boy, I love that. No, no one loves that. You need to get information before you sign documents. We need to make sure that you're not being taken advantage of, that you're entering into these agreements, understanding what you're signing, understanding the good, understanding the bad, what you're giving up, what you're receiving, how it's going to impact you today how it's going to impact you in the future. We need to make sure that if there's another 50,000, 10,000, 5,000, or 100 or 500,000, that you get that. We don't want to leave that on the table. You need to understand your leverage. We need to get this information to you. And the radio show, again, this is designed to get you general information, to get you thinking. Get on these hot topics of what I see and then encourage you get specific information. I say it all the time. If you don't call me, call someone who knows what the heck they are doing and make sure that they know what the heck they're doing. Make sure, do research, go to my websites, pagasleaseattorney.com. Listen to this one, pipelineattorney.com. If you have a pipeline agreement and you're not going to pipelineattorney.com, why? Just go and read it. General information. Understand, hey, common mistakes, things I should know. Read about leverage assessment. Again, if you're thinking about giving us a call, check out the testimonials on the website. Guys, this is what I do. Listen to the show. Go back to the websites. Listen to prior shows. This is what I do. I want nothing more but to make sure that every Pennsylvania landowner, every Pennsylvania oil and gas right owner is getting the best deal possible. And you know what I also want to make sure? Oh, do I want to make sure of this? That no landowner in Pennsylvania is sitting there with a dead lease that's not surrendered or released at the courthouse. Here's what I mean. There are, I am convinced, there are hundreds upon hundreds 
There literally may be thousands, maybe, but I am convinced there are easily hundreds of leases, oil and gas leases in Pennsylvania that have terminated. Listen, guys, what does that mean? They're over. They're dead. They don't exist. They are not valid. They are terminated. But, 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 they still are recorded at the courthouse as a valid lease. Meaning, if you were ever going to get another offer from another company, you're probably not going to get it. Because when they look at the courthouse, they see you have a valid lease. More importantly than that, you start cashing checks because you think you have a valid lease. And you may have just revived that dead lease. You know, too, who you are. You're, people signing leases in 2000 to 2006, 7, 8, haven't seen a dime. Haven't seen a dime other than these annual shut-in payments. And I'm going to talk about this today. Now, and listen, guys, I know for a fact, you know, this is Tioga County again, but I know the people are getting this past week. I had multiple calls, multiple calls from people in Tioga County who received letters from Sweppy, from Sweppy, saying, let me get it. Here, let me get this letter. Sorry, I should have had it. Saying, saying, here's the letter. Dear lease rental owner. Now, let me pause for a second and say, guys, please pay attention. Please, and I mean that respectfully. Please pay attention. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I'm going to read a letter that was sent to a client in Tioga County, and I've had other calls this week about this letter, this type of letter. And pay attention because you may have, and there's a good chance that people out there have received this letter if you didn't cash a check. So what happens is this letter is sent. This one sent January 2020. says, Dear Lease Rental Owner, our records indicate that the following check payable to you is still outstanding. Break, what does that mean? The person didn't cash the check. Why? Because they knew that something's fishy, that for the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth year, they're getting shut-in payments, that they signed a lease in 2000 to 2005, and they haven't seen a dime of royalty. So they said, you know what, I'm tired of cashing these yearly checks because I don't know that I have a valid lease. So what happens is this person didn't cash a check because they said, we don't think we have a valid lease. Oh, by the way, I represent this person. Yes, I represent this person in a lawsuit against Sweppy. So, the person gets the letter. Our records indicate that the following check payable to you is still outstanding. Then it lists the day of the check, the date of the check. Well, this check was dated November of 2018. So, this check isn't that old, okay? But let me read. I'm going to explain why that's important. Next sentence. In all bold text. So, hey, guys, pay attention. We're going to scare you here. Please be aware that the law requires that unclaimed property must be sheeted to the state after a certain period of time. So, what is that saying? They're saying, my opinion. Let me break and give you some opinion here. My opinion, they want to scare this person. Hey, if you don't cash this check, we have to turn these funds over to the state. And it says, after a, quote, certain period of time. Doesn't say this year doesn't say after one year, after two, after three, after four, after five. After a certain period of time. Well, this check is nowhere near two years old. Nowhere near. Nowhere near. This is back to the letter, verbatim. If this check is in your, in your possession, please deposit it promptly. Break my opinion. Heck yeah! Please deposit it because now 
at least by depositing it, you must think your lease is still valid because you're taking money that the company is sending you. So yeah, hey, please deposit it, and let's also throw in the word promptly. Please do it as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Hurry up. Because, my opinion, they want you to at least believe you have a valid lease so you won't do anything about it. But maybe worse, maybe by depositing that check, you are now ratifying, rat, 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 there's the rat word. You are now ratifying. You have a lease. That's an argument the company will can and almost certainly will make if you cash that check. They will also say, almost certainly, you've waived any claim to challenge your lease because you cashed that check. Now, whether that's true or not and whether that happens in a legal fight and who's successful, that's a different story. But that's going to be their position. Almost certainly. But then on top of that, you as an individual, when you're cashing a check that the company sends you, you are probably thinking they are sending this to you because you have a valid gas lease. Why else would a company send you a check if you didn't have a lease? They're not that nice, are they? They just send checks to people when leases don't exist. Well, I'm going to tell you, I don't have a lease with the company, and I don't get any checks from companies. So the answer is, no, they're not that nice. They're not that nice. So I say to you, I believe there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds easily of leases that are expired in Pennsylvania that have not been released or surrendered by the company. So why would a company send you checks if you don't have a valid lease? The answer is simple, because they want you to think you have a valid lease. They want you to think you have a valid lease. They do not want you to challenge your lease, which may or clearly is terminated. The reason is they do not want to give you a new lease. They don't want to. They want to keep you under your old lease from the years typically 2000 to say 2008. Why? Because it's probably a really bad lease for you and a good lease for them. Oh, and they don't have to pay you another per acre bonus if they operate under the same old lease. Also, most of those old leases by far are at 12.5% royalty rate. And if you sign a new lease in modern times, generally speaking, they're at minimum 15%. Generally speaking, at minimum, which results in 20% more royalty to you. The difference of 12.5% to 15%, even though it's only a 2.5% difference as you look at your royalty rate, the net effect of that is that you receive 20% more royalty. So why would a company want to do a new lease? Well, of course they don't. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Of course they don't want to do a new lease because they have to pay for it. And they most likely have to give you more royalty. So yes, now we deal with times where there's very little drilling. Gas prices are low. My opinion, companies have become very desperate to hold terminated leases. And I think, opinion here, that this letter is an example of saying, hey, we need to send out these letters to try to get people to cash checks. So at one, at least they think they have a valid lease. And two, if they cash it, now they've given us arguments to say, hey, you cash the check, therefore you've ratified, rat, 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 ratified your lease, you've ratified your lease, and you waived any argument to have that you have to say there's not a valid lease. That's what's going on in my opinion, and I'm very strong in that. You're listening again to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. 
join me each and every week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus because we got to get this information to you. We have to get this information. Now, this is fascinating to me. I've been doing this. You know, this is what I do. <laughs> Represent oil and gas owners, oil and gas right owners. So, since 2007, let's say, I've seen these letters, these types of letters. But I'm going to tell you from memory, I don't ever, ever remember seeing a company sending a letter to somebody encouraging them to cash their check under threat that they will have to transfer that the, or that money that you didn't cash, that they have to transfer it to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Generally speaking, it usually takes three, four, five, usually four or five years until someone gets such a letter. But this letter, this letter was sent, let me get my times right. This letter was sent less than 15 months after the check was sent. Let me explain. So, you have a lease that's very suspect. And the person, here you are the company, and the person who owns the lease, the landowner, isn't cashing your checks. And they didn't cash their check from last year, which is a signal, <laughs> they're on to you. They're on that you may have a problem or you do have a problem. So they don't cash the check. So the company knows, hey, this, this is only going to get worse. As time goes and they don't cash checks, our argument is getting worse. So instead of waiting five years, four years to send the letter saying, hey, if you don't cash your checks, we have to turn those funds over to the state, which, by the way, you very well may be able to get that money back, which I've done and we're doing now. So, you know, it's not, maybe not the big threat that you might think it is, but the company now sends this letter less than 15 months after the date of the check. And they do that because they want you to cash the check. They know, in my opinion, they got a problem. And if they wait two, three, four years to start threatening you, oh, we ought to turn these funds over to the state, well, their problem just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So, Tioga County, if you got such a letter from Sweppy, call my office 570-307-0702 570-307-0702 now again i want to say what's really crazy about this is is sweppy sent this letter to a client that i'm currently representing in a lawsuit against sweppy <laughs> hey guys hey hurry up cash that check Cash that check. <sighs> Guys, and this is why I preach. Reviews, consultations. If you have an old lease which we think is expired, you're held by shut-in and shut-in only for years and years. Call my office. Do a review and consultation. Let's see if we can get you out of that lease. I am going to talk in the upcoming segments about some successes that I've had in having leases surrendered with various companies. And I'm going to limit this talk. I'm going to limit these successes to the last few months. Not over the history of the time, but the last few months. So people out there, we need to do something, and I'm going to explain why. You're listening to all things Marcellus. I'm going to explain what happens when you can't do something and you got a good case. I'm going to explain it to you because I'm going to show you what we did and how it was successful. So stay tuned. Keep listening. You're listening to all things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I'm here each and every week at this time on this station to bring you the information you need and call the office, learn about reviews and consultations. We can't let this stand. 570 570- 307-0702. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember to join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. As you should, I hopefully know, I, Doug Clark, have never, will never represent oil or gas 
pipeline energy companies. I represent landowners, oil and gas right owners all across Pennsylvania, regardless of where the properties or rights are located, as long as it is in Pennsylvania. I have clients all across Pennsylvania. I've represented clients with as little as 0.1 acres and as high as over 5,000 acres and actually even more. So I don't care where you are. I don't care how big your property is. We want to make sure, I want to make sure you're getting the information you need. That's why I talk so much about reviews and consultations before you sign anything. Learn your rights. Learn your leverage. Find out what's this about. What am I giving up? What am I going to benefit from? Can I negotiate it? What are the type of market rights rates? What may I be able to negotiate? That's what we need to get in your mind. We need to get, in, to get that information to you. And generally, these reviews take one to two hours. And then we can go from there. If additional time or work is needed, that's up to you. But you understand what's going on. So call. I say it all the time. Put down the pen. Pick up the phone. Call me, 570-307-0702. I do all of these reviews and consultations myself. I do many, many, many of them by telephone with people, again, all across Pennsylvania, all across even the country, and even in other countries, as long as the property is in Pennsylvania. So call and learn. Find out. If you don't like it and it's not right for you, that's okay. But pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Don't pick up the pen. Don't pick up the pen. Pick up the phone. Give me a call. I want to help. I want to make sure, again, as we said, we don't want anyone taken advantage of. Call the Clark Law Firm, 570-307-0702. Look at the websites, pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. This radio show will be up and available Monday morning. So if you can't join me each and every week at this time on this station, you can go to the websites. PAGasLeaseAttorney.com, PipelineAttorney.com. Listen to the show at your leisure. Check it out and listen to the show. And I want to say hi to my friend Bernie in Arizona. So I want to go back now and just quickly just summarize segment one. Here's the deal, especially in Tioga County, but this happens elsewhere. Here's the deal. If you're not cashing your checks, your annual shut-in checks because you believe you have an expired lease. And then you get this letter, especially a letter sent less than 15 months after you didn't cash the check, saying, hey, you better cash this check or after a, quote, certain amount of time, we'll have to send your money to the state. My opinion, and I think it's obviously clear, the company is trying to scare you cash the check, and then you'll at least think you have a lease, and so you won't call Doug Clark. You'll think you have a lease. Why would the company send you money if you didn't have a lease? Because they want you to think you have a lease. And if you don't contest your lease, and you cash the checks, and you don't take action, you don't ask questions, you don't learn your rights, there are going to be, in my opinion, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and maybe even much more than that, leases that have expired, that have terminated, that are going to end up becoming active and valid because people start cashing checks, especially royalty checks. And also because people will be signing. People will be signing, and I hope to heavens that no one who listens to this show will, but they will sign amendments, modifications, and, oh, yes, ratifications, ratifications to bring their le leases back to life. And I know this because that's the argument that I have to deal with whenever we have a lease that in cases are clearly, ter ter or <laughs> clearly terminated, but the people signed a ratification, and the company says, meh, your client signed a ratification. Why did the client do that? Because they had no idea, no idea the impact of signing that document, what that impact was going to be. 
They had no idea. They would never have. Take one case of mine. My opinion, <laughs> I have no doubt the lease was expired. Client signed a document that included the ratification, rat, 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 and unfortunately may have lost out on over a million dollars in bonus. Had they called me, done a review and consultation, one to two hours, never would have happened. Never would have happened. Gave up an increase of royalty of probably 5.5%, probably, in that range. Let's say it was 4. <laughs> I mean, get the idea. Gave up literally over time probably and almost certainly millions of dollars because they signed a ratification. And I have no doubt in my mind that many, many more people, many more, and I believe potentially hundreds and hundreds, will do the same thing. And if you're listening to this show and you do that, that is really sad. Let's not let that happen. Let's not let that happen. And like I say, these companies, look, I know for a fact they listen to the show. I just was talking to a land manager the other day. I said, hey, you know, how's it going? I just recorded the show. And he says, oh, land man works for the company, not you, the landowner. Yeah, they listen to the show. They listen to me talk about ratifications because they know that's a major weapon in their arsenal. They hear me say it, and I know they go, oh, gosh, gosh, I wish the people weren't hearing that. So what are they going to do? In my opinion, they're going to figure out ways to present documents to you so they bury the ratification language within the document. So again, you have no idea or at least no understanding of what you're signing. But when you sign it, you are saying essentially you understood it and you agree to it all. So when you come back later and say, well, geez, I didn't understand, forget about it. That's not going to work for you. It's not going to work. So that's why I encourage anyone, I don't care what the document is, if they are asking you to put your signature on it, put the pen down. Put it down. Pick up the phone. Call my office. Again, reviews and consultations on any type of document usually take, including the review. You send me the documents. I do my own research, what I need to do to help you, meaning online research, find out the drilling history, activity, all these things as I need to. Then we do an either an in-office visit or we can do it by telephone. I do the majority by telephone because I represent people all over. But we do then the review. I do the review. We do the consultation and you won't make that mistake because you'll have the information given to you by somebody who is working for you and not the land man, yep, who's working for the company, not for you, the land owner. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm, where I and we never have and never, ever will represent gas or pipeline companies. Never have, never will. Give me a call. See if I can help you. 570-307-0702. So just again to reiterate, any document, be safe. Any document. It may seem like nothing. And I will tell you this. If it is a nothing document that has no consequence, that does nothing bad for you, I'll let you know. And the worst thing that happens is, you know, when you sign a document, you're not getting taken advantage of. You're not giving up tens of thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of dollars. You're going to know that. You're going to know it because you did a review and consultation by somebody who does this for a living, who's working for you, not working for the gas company, not working for the pipeline company. You need to get this information. And... Again, they're one to two hours, so do it, do it, do it. 570-307-0702. Now, I want to go, so why do I get so fired up over this? Why does this bother me so bad? Because this guy from Airport Road, Vandergrift, Pennsylvania, and check it out, Armstrong County, I don't want to see people taken advantage of. I don't want to see people like my grandfather who worked in the mill, who farmed his property his whole life, and my great-grandfather before him, and my dad. My dad, who worked at Allegheny Ludlam Steel Mill, 
who's now retired and farms my grandfather and great-grandfather's farm. I don't want to see people like my grandfather and my dad and all the other neighbors on the dime road in Parks Township, Pennsylvania, in Parks Township, Armstrong County. I don't want to see anyone there or anywhere else taken advantage of because you know what? They're all good people. My clients are good people. And I don't want to see I don't want to see anyone taken advantage of. But I'll tell you what, I get mad. I get irate when I know that companies are calculating. I'll just say this, my opinion. My opinion. Companies are calculating as to how do we get the best possible deal and the best possible agreement and give the landowner the least amount of money and give ourselves the most flexibility? And how do we preserve these leases even though they are already terminated? Now, I said that's my opinion, but you know what? I'll still stick with that, but I don't know how that's not what they're thinking. So you as the landowner, unfortunately, this isn't what you do for a living. You don't, you know, you don't have, and it's not that you have a law degree, you know this stuff. You don't do it for a living. So you don't know. So you can be taken advantage of. You can be taken advantage of. There are many things in the world that I could be taken advantage of, me, Doug Clark, many things that I don't know about. Many, 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 and I'll gladly tell you. I'll gladly tell you. But if it's something really important, I'm going to have to either find out, which sometimes you can do, but other times, you know what? You're going to get to have to get help by somebody who's working for you. And that's why I encourage you, go to the websites. I know where my heart is, and I know where my head is. And I want to make sure that this stuff stops. And I'm going to talk in this next segment about several cases, several leases, that I have communicated with the companies or various companies, and got these leases terminated in the last few months. And if I didn't do that, if the people didn't call me, 570-307-0702, if they did not call me and I didn't write the letter to the company, I can't even begin to imagine that anything would have changed. And then the people may have signed ratification documents, cashed checks, thought they had a lease, and allowed their old, low, poor-term lease to continue and give up any chance for a new bonus, give up any chance for a higher royalty percentage, give up any chance to try to negotiate for no deductions, to give up any chance to try to negotiate for operation restrictions. We got to stop that. Call me. 570-307-0702. Stay with me. I'm going to go through real examples of terminating leases. Real examples of terminating leases. Real examples. It's amazing. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, join me each and every week at this time for All Things Marcellus. I have been doing this radio show now I'm in my 10th year, 10 years of doing all things Marcellus. So I encourage you, if you're new to the show, and if you're not new to the show, go to the websites. If you miss any show any week, you can go to the websites, check out the radio show, and listen to historical shows over time. There are shows up there for everybody, regardless of the subject, regardless of the subject. I talk a lot, I've been talking a lot about recently in Tioga County especially, but these leases that have terminated, in my opinion, I think it's clear in many, many cases, and I got to get this information out. So we have to do something about this. Why do I say it? Why do I say it? Well, again, I want everybody to have a chance to negotiate a new lease. I want everyone who has a lease that's expired to have that lease surrendered and release that to courthouse so you can negotiate again in the future, whether it be now or in the future. Don't sit back. Take action and do something about it. Why do I say that? Well, let me give you an example. You know what? Let me give you several examples. Here is a piece of paper. It is a copy of what we call a demand letter. It was a demand letter that I wrote 
on January 8, 2020. I wrote it to Sweppy LP, and I said, I'm not going to read the whole letter, but I set forth the reasons why this client's lease has terminated, but the company had not surrendered it or given it up. So they were continuing to make payments, but not surrendering the lease, which is what I keep talking about. So just because you get a payment does not mean your lease is valid. The company may want to think, want you to think, the company may want you to think because you're getting a check, your lease must be valid. They want you to think you're not just getting checks for the heck of it, that they're sending checks to you because you have a valid lease. Or perhaps you don't have a valid lease, but the company wants you to think you do so you don't challenge it. So in this case, I say, hey, company, there's not a valid lease here. You must surrender this lease. You must give it up. Record a release and surrender at the courthouse. And I made the argument in this letter explaining why the lease was terminated based upon the shut-in provision of the lease and the background and history of the development in this case. I say, if Sweppy fails to perform its legal obligation releasing the lease in the next 30 days, we'll be acting, I assert, in bad faith and in violation of Pennsylvania law. And if that happens and the lease is over, then we're going to do something about it. January 8, 2020. I hold in my hand now two more pieces of paper. One saying, Dear Mr. Clark, Sweppy is in receipt of your January 8, 2000 letter. A receipt of your correspondence, dated January 8, 2020. Received it, Sweppy received it on January 16. So I sent it on the 8th, sent it certified mail. They got it eight days later. This correspondence is dated January 23rd to me. So let me give you this history again. January 8th, I write a letter saying, this lease is terminated. You must release and surrender it because it's terminated. It doesn't exist anymore. And if you don't, you'll be acting in violation of Pennsylvania law because Pennsylvania law requires within 30 days of termination, you must surrender or record to release. And I assert also that we have a bad faith claim here because I assert that I see a practice of hi a history and a practice of this. So I say, you need to do this or we're going to do something about it, which we would if nothing happened. So that letter, January 8th, is sent. On January 16th, on January 16th, Sweppy receives the letter. Then, on January 23rd, so one week later, seven days later, Sweppy sends me a responsive letter. That letter says they were in receipt of my correspondence that I sent to them on January 8th, and they say, enclosed, please find a copy of the surrender, the release and surrender that we have recorded yesterday in the Tioga County Courthouse. Huh, huh. And then inside that envelope is this document, which is recorded on January 22nd, 2020, a surrender, giving up my client's lease. So my client's lease, which in this case was dated in October of 2008, October of 2008, I said, this lease is terminated. So their October 2008 lease, when I wrote to, I said, look, this lease terminated in 2015. So I assert this lease is terminated in 2015. Guys, it's now 2020. And I said, you got to record a release of this. So within apparently six days, of receiving my letter, I, su I submit to you, they recognized, uh-oh, my opinion, my opinion, my opinion. Well, they caught us. He caught us. It's not a valid lease. We better surrender it. Six days after getting the letter, they surrender it. Six days later. Then they send me a copy of the recorded surrender. My clients now no longer have a lease. They are free to negotiate going forward. That lease that was signed in October of 2008 is now over. 
that lease that the company in my position claimed to hold for approximately five years after it ended. When I wrote the letter, in this case, it was released six days later. I hope everyone's understanding this. I'm going to repeat it. Client signed a lease October 2008. Lease has a five-year term. It's thereafter shut in for reasons in the lease. I submit to the company this lease expired in October of 2015. It is now 2020. So for from 2015 to four to five years later, 2020, I assert company, you are maintaining a lease without any authority. So we're not going to cash your shut in checks. And you need to release this as soon as possible because you are in violation of Pennsylvania law, which requires a release and surrender of a lease within 30 days of termination. Here we're talking about almost five years. And this is not, this is not a one-time thing as you're about to hear here in a minute. So I send that letter on January, letter is dated January 8, 2020, January 22nd. January 22nd, the company receives the le my, my letter. They received my January 8th letter. They received the January 8th letter on January 16th. They read the letter. They got to look at the situation. They say, you know, hey, is there something here? They get the letter six days after receipt of the letter. They surrender the gas lease. They record a surrender in the Tioga County Courthouse. My client's lease, which I submit was over in 2015, was released and surrendered within six days of getting my letter in 2020. And here's the other part. I ain't sending these letters to say, oh, okay, well, no big deal. You disagree. We're going to take action. We'll sue you. We'll sue you. Because you can't do this. Again, depends on the situation. But you can't hold invalid leases. And if you want to fight it, we'll fight it. I'm not afraid to fight it. But maybe because the case is so darn clear, and I submit to you many of them are, maybe they'll just release it because they know they don't have a lease, and they know we'll fight it if they try to deny it. So that's why I preach. we got to take action. Don't sit on your butt. From 2015 to 2020, nobody did anything. The lease wasn't released or surrendered, despite the Pennsylvania law saying you needed to do it 30 days after. No. And I submit to you, too. If this client signed a rat, rat ratification, we would, there, I would have no argument. <laughs> they would say, hey, they ratified the lease and survive again. You can't do that. This is a tremendous difference between ratifying, rat, 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 ratifying a lease and getting it surrendered. So now the person is eligible for a new bonus. And if it's $2,000 an acre and they have 100 acres, that's $200,000 they could get. They're also eligible to negotiate new royalty rates, and it's a 15%. That's going to result in 20% more royalty for them. Now, listen, the negotiations will be what they be, and rates will be what they'll be, but I'm giving you examples of what may occur. But most importantly, this client, within six days of getting my letter, the company released the lease. And if I didn't write the letter, does anyone think that that lease would have been released in six days or ever? Or does anyone who listens to this show think, hey, the company would try to keep getting them to sign checks? The company would then send them a letter, hey, if you don't sign the checks, we're going to turn that money over to the state. Ooh, be careful. Be careful. Or the company goes and says, hey, we'll produce, and then if they get royalty checks, we will We'll say they ratified the, the lease when they cashed the royalty checks. Or else, if we don't want to be that risky, we'll put something together that has those magical rat, rat, ratification words, ratification. And so then we can say they validated their lease and brought it back to life. But no, this person called, 
We did a review and consultation. I said, hey, look, I think your lease has been terminated about five years ago. Write a letter. Six days later, lease is gone. And here I know we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds that I think are in somewhat similar circumstances that there aren't valid leases. So that's why I say, guys, call. Do a review and consultation. Get out of these dead leases if they're dead. Because otherwise, you run the risk of reviving dead leases and missing out on a lot of potential money over time in your bonus and property protections. Call me, 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. This has got to stop, and I'm going to do everything I can to stop companies holding dead leases. I'll be right back because I'm going to give you other examples of other letters I wrote and other leases that were getting released that over the last couple months. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember to join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus and give me a call for any and all oil and gas representation talking about these surrender issues, but whether it's gas lease, gas lease negotiations, pipelines, unitization, royalty issues, surface use agreements, roadway agreements, any and all contracts related to natural gas development. Also doing more and more with estate planning with clients who are getting royalties or maybe getting royalties in the near future, buying and selling gas rights. If you're thinking about selling your gas rights, do a review and consultation before you sign anything. If you are thinking about selling oil and gas rights, call my office, do a review and consultation before you sign anything. 570-307-0702. Now, today, another very important show. Because I believe confidently there are hundreds and hundreds, and there may be into the thousands, of leases in Pennsylvania and many, many, many of them in Tioga County that have expired, but the companies pay yearly shut-in checks or even quarterly shut-in checks because they want you, in my opinion, to cash those checks to at least, number one, believe you have a lease. Or if you challenge your lease in the future, it gives them an argument to say by cashing the check, you've acknowledged or ratified that you have a lease. And even if you, if you cash the check, it, it, it gives an indication that you must think you have a lease. So we got to just simply or stop simply cashing checks when we think the lease is in doubt. But even if you did cash your shut-in check and you've been shut in for eight years, nine years, call me because there still might be something we can do about it. But we have to understand what is going on. We have to knock out these dead leases and allow you to be a free agent whenever a new lease offer presents itself. Because if you're not a free agent, you're not going to get a new lease offer. You're going to be stuck under the terms of your old lease, which typically is not in your favor, or the company would have surrendered it. And let me tell you guys, with the gas prices, lack of drilling, understand this. The companies are under tremendous pressure. They're not making as much money. Their stock prices are getting crushed. They need to try to preserve leases. They don't want to give you a new lease because that's going to cost them more money whenever they give you the lease and most likely over the payment of the lease because your new lease will have a higher royalty percentage. So the more prices go down, and the less drilling occurs, the more pressure there is on the company to try to maintain the lease. As I gave you that example, I write a letter and say, you better surrender this in 30 days, or I'll submit you're acting in bad faith because this lease terminated almost five years ago, four to five years ago. And if you don't, you, company, ex will be sued because you can't do this, in my opinion. Eight days, six days, excuse me, six days after getting the letter, a release was filed in the courthouse. How many others are there out there? You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You think your lease may have terminated? Call, learn about reviews and consultations, 
570-307-0702. And keep listening to all things Marcellus with me each week at this time on this station. Now, look, if you listen, you know I have, in my own opinion, I have a problem because I think Sweppy does this with a lot of leases that I believe are terminated. But they're not the only ones, guys. They're not the only ones. So let me tell you this. Here's a paper. This uh, I wrote to, uh, let me see, because look, there's a bunch of these. This one is Alta, Alta, saying, hey, this lease is over, but you're, you're maintaining the lease. The lease in this case, we wanted a, a lease of a, or a secure a release of a Jan, uh, oh, excuse me, secure a release of a lease that was dated in January or signed January 2010, January 2010 write the letter. I send this out in January of 2020 saying, Hey, this is dead. This lease is over. I get a response. Alta. Our records indicate that the lease is expired. We are preparing a surrender of the oil and gas lease. I'll email you a copy once it's recorded. People could have done nothing in this 2010 lease. I would assume would continue to be held because the company wasn't giving it up. So listen, Alta, 2020. Next one. This involves several companies. This I communicated with one of the companies, and the companies listed on this lease or who have an interest in the lease are Chesapeake, Chief, Equinor, and Mitsui. I write the company in January 2020 saying that I was retained by these landowners, and I my position is these, in this case, there were two leases, these have expired. And the company responds indicating, hey, we're one of the owners of this lease, and we are agreeable to draft a release of this and a surrender and circulate it to the other holders because we need to get four companies to sign this release because four of them have an interest. And it lo it's anticipated that this process will take approximately one to two months to have the release and surrender all signed by all the companies and recorded. So right there, guys, we have Sweppy, Alta, Chesapeake, Chief, Equinor, and Mitsui. January 2020, I write to companies. I write, now in, I want to make sure I'm clear because I, I want to be correct. I write to one of the four companies on the Chesapeake, Chief, Equinor, and Mitsui. Say, hey, I think this is ended. So bottom line, though, is correspondence and i you know i was going to go back months because i have a couple other that i had released at the end of last year at the end of uh, 2019 but i want to say this 2020 i have communicated with sweppy i've communicated with chief i've communicated with alta and as a result of that all of these companies are have already have sweppy well sweppy has are preparing releases and surrenders and are going to surrender these leases. Otherwise, they would have kept them. Let's do something about this, guys. This is why if you are held and you're shut in and you think you may have a lease that's expired, call me, 570-307-0702. Do a review and consultation. Keep listening each and every week to all things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Call me for assistance. 570, any representation, 307-0702. Remember, the landman works for the company, not you, the landowner. Pick up the, fan, pick up the phone, put down the pen, 570-307-0702, and have a great, great week, everyone. See you next week.